Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Lost with Friends. As always, I'm your host, Paul, and joining me today is someone who we haven't heard much of, if at all, from season two, but one person we absolutely love talking to. Welcome back. Reintroduce yourself, sir. Hello, everyone. My name is Esteban, and I'm back by popular demand. By popular demand, as in I've been demanding it, and your schedule finally opened up for me. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Basically, pretty much. Um, But... (laughs) There was there was actually a few times earlier in uh, season two episodes that uh, we were supposed to get to. It was supposed to be you and me and Jake. And Jake, by the way, is starting to get a complex. He thinks that maybe you don't want to record with him. And I told him he's absolutely <laughs> right. And <laughs> no, there was a few episodes that we were supposed to do you and myself and Jake and uh, timing just didn't work out. But we finally got together and we are doing an episode that you said before we started recording, you said you are emotionally prepared for right yeah this is a shocking episode for anybody who has seen it for the first time or or anybody who's going to see it for the first time um it's a very shocking episode and you know i guess for some people you know they're they get pretty excited because you know the characters that are involved in the plot but some others you know are you know are just sad and unfair and maybe i can explain that a little bit you know uh while we're watching the show uh, yes. Okay. So we are going to be doing the episode two for the road. And as Esteban just said, we are going to be doing this episode commentary style. So, uh, it's going to be a little different. We will give you a few seconds. We are already lined up roughly at the, uh, exact spot where we're going to start. Um, so if we don't have anything else, you, any listeners can pause this, get your thing. We are at the, we are after the previously on lost section. We've turned our volume down. We've put our subtitles on. And, uh, if there's nothing else, we're going to get ready to hit play, right? I am ready. Okay. So let's do three, two, one play. Okay. Gotcha. So three, two, one one play okay so we are here with uh jack and kate right and michael yes you know hopefully alive hopefully (laughs) and i don't understand like what i don't know there's they let them maybe they all, maybe they let them go and i think that i think that that's right like oh maybe they're still there and and she's just like let them go you know yeah they, but what a sucky doctor i mean you're supposed to care for your patient no matter what you're not supposed to go you know looking for some you know other person there and yeah, but you know i for, hate do that for once and anybody who listens to this show is going to be surprised i'm actually on jack's side with that because like he specifically went out there and he's just like we're going to go out there whatever and then he thinks maybe there is somebody out there and they're not. And he's, I think he's right in, in looking for them because that was ultimately his goal. You're right. In terms of being a doctor. Yes, that was not very great, but, um, I can't believe I just agreed with a Jack point of view on something. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Unheard of. Um, by the way, did you see like all the numbers on top of the patrol cars? Like 23. Yeah. I saw that. I saw that. I saw that. Um, so now, and I'm not, go ahead. I'm not the best with details, but I caught that one. That was pretty fast, and I actually caught that. I think this is the first time that I actually seen the numbers on top of the patrol car. Jake, because I tend to point that out when doing this rewatch, Jake and a few other people constantly send me references to the numbers and all of Sawyer's nicknames. Nice, because that's what I tend to point out. Um, okay, so we are here in the flashback with Ana Lucia and her mother. Who I don't know if we've ever learned her mother's name. Do we ever learn her mother's name? I don't know. Okay. Captain something. Captain. Captain Cortez, I guess. Right. Um, and we get the follow up to what we saw in the previously on Lost thing, and uh, this Jason McCormick guy is dead. Right. And I, it's, right. I always thought it was weird. I mean, it's good, I guess, but like the very her very next episode, they they found it, and her mom is just like, "You did it!" Like. Normally, if it if this was a regular TV show where like a Law and Order or a CSI or something, it would have probably taken until the next season until that that follow up right. happened. Like her right. very next episode, it like it's right there. 
Right. I'm trying to read her, you know, name tag or whatever, you know, her ID, um, Ana Lucia's mother, but I can't read it. So, sorry, you were saying? No, 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 that's <laughs> no, fine. I, I completely agree with you that if this were, you know, your normal TV show, which it isn't because this TV show is awesome, um, they would have, you know, built up to this, you know, for like another season or something to, to see what would happen. Yeah. And then she just quits. Yeah. Like, so be just because her mom, her mother is like, you know, oh, you're a you're a, yeah. a police officer. She's, yep. Well, then I quit. <laughs> yeah. Because basically to, to me that that's like, OK, I quit because I will. I just want to kill people. Right. Um, I like I like that scene where she's opening the door of the morgue and then, you know, they cut back to, you know, present time. And then she's opening the door, the the, the door to the closet, whatever it is that they call that. They, I know that they have the armory for it, but I can't. You're right, the armory. Now, here's the thing, though. So, in the, I want to say it was the previous episode, because I'm watching these slightly out of order. In the previous episode, when Locke was trying to figure out, or maybe it's an episode or two from now, when Locke is, is writing, you know, scribbling down all the things about the question mark, and he says, I want to talk to him. And Ana Lucia says, the gun is with Jack. Is it, mm. I, don't, I can't remember now if that's happened already, but I believe she said that in one of the... in perhaps the previous episode where she's just like, Oh, the gun is with Jack, but if you want to talk to him, talk to him. And Locke just has to bang on the door and talk to him. But yet now she's there and, uh, she opens the door and goes in and then she gets right in his face. Like she's doing, and then it's exactly something like that just happens. Right. Like it just, it doesn't quite make sense. She gets too greedy sometimes, you know, like she thinks she has power and, but she doesn't. So, yeah. I've, I've recently, in the the last few episodes that I've recorded of this, I, I, re- I started calling him Benry on accident because I was, <laughs> I was typing the notes on my phone as I was watching it. And instead of, I went to type Henry, but the B and the H are, are near each other on the right. keyboard. And I typed Benry and I just go, yep, that works. That's okay. I'm going to keep that. <laughs> Especially because at this point in time, we still don't know what his real name is. Right. Or or do we? No, we still well, are we, referring to we, him as well, Henry, right? Yeah, we know. They're all still right, referring know, to him but, as, as right, Henry yeah. or I'm just, our mystery man. I'm just, man. you know, trying to immerse myself in this, you know, whole experience. Like, if it's the first time I'm watching this episode, which it isn't. It's probably, like, the sixth or seventh time that I've watched it, but still. Yeah. So... And this is great. Now she got a nice job, you know, at the airport. She probably gets, you know, awesome benefits, you know, a lot of vacation time. Sure. I'm sure. She looks happy. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Tequila and Tequila and (laughs) Right. Which, you know, it was out of all of the things that I that I had that I tried while in Hawaii, I did not go with that at all. And I love his his use of wand as a verb. You wanded me at security. <laughs> How does one get into wanding? <laughs> that's a special skill, probably. One stops being a cop. Nice answer, I guess. Yeah. Um. I guess I guess that's like the normal, you know, flow chart, if you will. After you are done being a cop, I guess you go into like mall security or like you know, yeah, bodyguard some, some sort of. And I mean, well, if you're security. if you're still in your prime, you go into private security. But yeah, if you're, I mean, she's still in her prime, so realistically, she could have gotten like a private security job or whatever. But yeah, I would think, like you said, like mall mall cop or right. something like that. Like, and that reminds me, I don't know if you've seen that movie. Have you seen Get Out yet? No. Uh, okay, then never mind. I won't spoil it. But, you know, there's a pretty big, you know, there's like uh, a joke that goes throughout the entire uh, uh, movie about a TSA agent claiming that, you know, just because we're TSA doesn't mean that we're not actual, you know, cops or police officers or something like that. He puts it like that. And it's actually quite funny. Okay. So, you know, she's airport security, but it's probably, you know, just as good as being a cop. Well, TSA, is, I mean, I don't know if, they're, if they've officially said TSA, but TSA should be like a federal, a federal job. So that should be really good. Like, as right. you were saying before, right. with like benefits and stuff. Right. Um, 
I do. I got to say though, I, this is one of the things that that I love about Lost. Everybody has their their little things that the reasons that they love it, and it's it's this six degrees of separation thing for me. The fact that she knows Jack's father, you know, right. and she had these dealings with him, and it's and especially as we see later on in this episode, the fact that. It's, you know, a moment or two before he had the interaction with Sawyer that Jack found out about in the previous season. Right. And not only that, the way that she meets Christian is very similar to the way that she meets Jack, you know, at an airport bar. And, you know, they're both really not in a good place. So, you know. Well, yeah. And I mean, and I mean, even think about the fact that, like, why was she coming home? Because she had just had the fallout with Christian. Right. You know? Right. And the fact that he, uh, it's going back to the previous scene, but the fact that he said he, he gave her the name Sarah, which is Jack's ex-wife, of course. Mm-hmm. Right. Probably took me my second or third time rewatching it before I, before I got that one, but yeah. Right. And I can't remember if, you know, if it's, I think I want to say it's probably season three. Um, so, you know, spoiler alert. Uh, but I think there's an episode where Jack, uh, is having a fight with his father, you know, as it usually goes. And he's asking him if he's having an affair with, uh, Sarah. Yeah. So, you know, and this is all just to fuel that whole, you know, theory that maybe they were actually having an affair or something like that, which we, you know, we eventually, uh, learn that it's not the case. Right. But, you know, this is one of the ways that, lost always play with your mind which i always appreciated so yeah <laughs> if you've come to apologize i forgive you for hitting me with your crutch <laughs> <laughs> oh benry this is one of the yeah benry's the best i have to say that i always like you know and this is just you know the beginning of us you know watching or seeing this this character, but he's actually going to grow to be one of the best characters in the show uh, with the be- some of the best lines ever. Oh yeah, um, yeah. I always say he's either my first or my second favorite character of the entire series. Right, 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 right. I mean, in terms of dialogue and in terms of lines, I think that he's probably number one with Sawyer being number two. But I mean, he is just. You know, the, the the irony and the sarcasm uh, was always great. Well, I just, I love the fact that he always, he's, he's he, at least for a large portion, he thinks he is the, the puppet master of everything. And the fact that he always has like a backup to his backup to his backup plan. Right, right, right. It's actually one of his lines. I always have a plan. I, wa- I always have a plan. I think that's season four. Yeah. He tells him, like, oh, when are you going to learn, John? I always have a plan. Yep. yep. And I feel like as a creative person, a lot of times I, I'm very similar. Not necessarily that I use my manipulative ways for, for bad, but uh, I always feel like I can see, you know, okay, if this happens, then that'll happen. Then that, Like, I could see not everything, but a lot of times where the dominoes might fall into place, you know? Right. Um, now wait, now what he's saying here, uh, Wayne has a very interesting theory about this. Cause you know, at first you're, you're thinking, you know, oh, okay. Yeah. He's just trying to get into Locke's head. We know he can do that. He's done that, you know, in several episodes, you know, he could like when he says about, you know, oh, why do you let the, the doctor make all the decisions? Um, but Wayne's theory was that because the others have been, searching for Locke for years, for decades, because Richard's gone to him and, you know, at various points in his life and whatever, that for whatever reason, Ben decided that he was going to actually go to try to get this guy because now he's there. Mm -hmm. Right. That's interesting. What did you, what do you think? We're, We're here with the Sawyer and Ana Lucia what did you think about their uh, little 
little, I don't want to say fling, but because they've, I mean, much like Sawyer and Juliet later because of the whole love rectangle, whatever, quadrangle, whatever you would call it. Like, it's always whoever, if Jack and Kate are on good terms, it seems Sawyer always gets in good with the uh, whoever the other woman is. At this point, it's Ana Lucia. Right. Later on, it's it's Juliet. What, what do you think? What are your thoughts? Um, I don't know. I just think that Sawyer and Kate were never really meant to be. So, you know, Sawyer is just going to try to find, you know, somebody else. Because really, the, the way they make it look, it's just that it's basically Sawyer ending up with somebody else and not somebody else ending up with Sawyer. I don't know if that makes sense. So, because I, I feel like Sawyer would like to be with Kate, but deep down he doesn't, he knows that, you know, they're not meant to be. So he's just going to, you know, take advantage of the situation, which I think is what he does with every single uh, woman that he's with. So he does that with Kate, he does that with uh, Ana Lucia, and he eventually does that with Juliet. But with Juliet, it's a little bit different because they actually end up, you know, living together and falling in love. So I really do think that it's just a matter of being, you know, seizing the moment basically see i don't know because like at this point especially like she still is treating herself walking after midnight plays on radio i love that um because that's another thing that i love is all of these uh you know little uh that you know we always hear that song the recurring motifs of the show um and by the way i have to point out the fact that uh in the previous scene when when christian was coming to ana lucia's hotel room uh, of course, we have to see that standard shot out the window of the Sid- you know, the harbor in Sydney mm-hmm. to let us know we are in Australia now. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, right. But no, going back to the to the Sawyer thing that we were saying, um, actually, this is a huge scene. I can't believe we're going to talk over it like this. But uh, yeah. with with the Sawyer thing, um, at one point he says with Kate and Kate says it in season one when he wants the kiss from her. And he says, you know, the fact that they have a lot in common and she says, you know, Oh, he thinks we have a connection. And I think at this point, Sawyer sees himself as having a connection with Ana Lucia because he's on the outside because he took all the guns and Ana Lucia has purposely kept herself on the outside because she still Mm -hmm. has regret over regret. Would that be the right word? remorse whatever it is over killing right. shannon and kind of how she became part of the overall survivor group so i think maybe that's part of it too right right and sorry to i mean i just wanted to talk a little bit about this scene oh yeah and please I'm go just, ahead i was just looking at her and i was just looking at, at the lady and um at this point we don't know who she is but she looks a lot like either Sarah or Jake's mom. Jake's mom, sorry, Kate's mom. Right? Did you see her? Yeah. Doesn't she look yeah. a little bit like Sarah? Yeah. Or, you know, Kate's mother? Well, she has like the, a, you know, that curly hair looks very much like like uh, right. Claire in like Claire. season six, right. of course. But Right, 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 right. And now, okay, so now when you when you originally watched it, you, you weren't live this show, you weren't, uh, in America. Now, did the say anything, uh, reference play to you? I know you're a big pop culture person, but did you, did you get that, that that's the reference that Hurley was going for? Um, probably not. I still don't know what he's talking about. Oh, you've never seen that movie. No, Uh, say anything. I mean, it sounds familiar. Well, I mean, it's what a it's a that? huge it's a huge staple of pop culture for this specific reason that he talks about the fact that you know the guy uh, at the end to get the girl back he he holds the boombox over his head outside her window. Oh, okay. So is that movie? Yeah, I mean, I've seen that I've seen that scene, and I know you know, but I really haven't seen the movie. I probably have, but you know. Well, I just and, figured, especially because no, like I know you, and I know you're a big pop culture person. I was wondering, and be from right. from being outside of the American pop culture bubble, if you will, I was wondering how much that reference played. Right? No, no, it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and see, even Locke says it about you know the deal that you know. They they gave us Michael and now all of a sudden he's just like oh yeah well he was he was shouting and he he came to me 
And they, right. they now, okay. So, oh, you think they're on the honor system? He says, well, how do we realistically, how do we know they're not like, you know, cause well, you, mean, you just have to be cautious. I guess you can just go, you know, assuming things. Right. Cause none the of these characters have ever assumed things on this show. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> so see the, here's the thing again with Sawyer I mean he's just going to take the opportunity you know he's a man so you know if somebody throws himself at him you know he just wasted most of that mango shame on him yeah, yeah. <laughs> a perfectly good mango <laughs> and an island where you know Food doesn't come around that often. <laughs> I I also little riding <laughs> little red riding the big bad wolf. Um, I do love uh the fact that he uses the their situation the fact that the fact that they have sex to uh. In a, in a later episode when he says, oh, we got caught in a net because he thinks that right. that's what Jack meant. <laughs> we cha <cha-cha. laughs> Now, did you expect this the very first time? Um, I guess you could see it coming. You know, th- there are certain scenes where you see, you know, like the physical aspect and the dynamic between the characters and, um, yeah, I could tell. I could see this was com- this was coming when they started fighting and you know, getting all over each other. I I and, knew this was coming. And the fact that he p- where exactly he put his hand on her hip too. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> that's there was no reason to put his hand there. So yeah. Ah, the marina. Uh... Sorry, I was just, was just there not long ago. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't go to the marina when I was in Hawaii, actually. Really? No, I didn't. I think I drove by it. Um, well, now, the first time but... I was there, I went, it was on that last day. It was the day when you and, and Jake left, and I was hanging out with uh, Kevin and Cherie and Paria and Rogen. Um, and we all, we were just all going around to various places, and that was one of the spots we went because we were trying to look for um, the. Uh, you know, the searcher and things like that. But yeah. Right. And then this time, um, Jake and Rudy and Liam and myself all went. Nice. I don't want to be silent. I don't quite know what to say here though, but I do love his, his thing. Oh, look what fate has delivered up this time. And it's a bar. Right. (laughs) I mean, and I just feel like how low or, you know, must, you know, you be in order to end up in this situation where you're like actually driving some stranger and, you know, halfway around the world and, you know, you don't even like the person because you're also so miserable. So, but I guess. Right. But aren't there, aren't there times though in your, in your day to day life where if you, if you were right in for whatever reason, if you were in a bar or whatever, there was the Sawyer moment. Um, if you were in a bar or somewhere where somebody, even if it wasn't necessarily like, oh, let's go on a plane to Australia. But if it was just like, hey, you know what? I'm about to do something. I will pay you a large amount of money. You know, come with me on a trip. Maybe we'll go to, okay, so like you're in Florida. So let's say maybe we'll go to, uh, you know, Louisiana or Texas or something like that, and you basically you you be my my security or whatever, and you're telling me there are certain times where you're you're so feeling so down in your life where you wouldn't do it just because you're like you know what I just it's money and I can get away from my life right now. Okay, several things. First of all, they would have to pay upfront, and then number two, I would just laugh at the fact that they think that I could provide. Security well, I would laugh somebody. at the fact that anybody could think you would provide you could provide security oh. too, but you understand right. my point. <laughs> maybe companionship, and maybe you know, like if, okay, you know, so there you go, really so, comments, but yeah, not so there you really go. So security. be 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 their be their date for you know 
they have a big event coming up and they they need they need a sexy Venezuelan man to to be their companion for the night. I mean, I don't know. It depends on how much money they're offering, and I'm pretty sure that it wouldn't be enough because after like an hour of being stuck with a stranger in the car, I would be just like, "Nope, get me out of here. I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here." <laughs> okay. Because I gotta say, like, there are certain—not that I'm a sexy Venezuelan man, but there are certain times where if somebody said that sort of thing to me, I might say, you know, it might be worth it to you know like i sometimes like i'm like oh man life is so depressing that you know in that in that scenario where someone offered me a way out i might you know actually take it i don't know and having to deal with a drunk person is just not the best so no i'm out count me out okay not e- not even for you know whatever amount of money unless it's a really good amount of money <laughs> <right now>. <laughs> <laughs> And that, I mean, even if it's a just, no amount you know, of money, unless it's am- a really good it, amount of money, right? If it's a really good amount of money, you know, I would. That's why I would have to add the pay up front clause to the agreement, so I can, you know, take half, the money and half run. up front, half once the job's done. More like seventy five twenty five. No one's gonna agree to that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if they really want security from a sexy Venezuelan guy, you know, they gotta do it on my terms. <laughs> If I didn't already name, if I didn't already have the naming convention for episodes, that would be the name of this episode. <laughs> Security from the sexy Venezuelan guy. <laughs> well, you know, the rules are meant to be broken. So you can go ahead and name this episode, you know, what was it again? Sexy Venezuelan security person or something? <laughs> Security from a sexy Venezuelan guy. <laughs> there you go. You know. Now, Locke, okay, now we missed the whole, we talked right over the whole Hurley uh, Libby scene, but we're here with, uh, with Locke. I'm sorry, I'm so self centered talking about myself, so go ahead. We're here with Locke <laughs> lying for Ana Lucia, and she's just giving him that look of like, why did you just cover for me? Right. And I. He's th- alive, thank God. What's that? No, I'm just saying that he's alive, thank God. Oh. And, you know, he's. Yeah. And up to this point, we really don't know what has been, you know, happening with him. I mean, it's the good thing, though, is the fact that they're all so concerned about him, despite the fact that the last time that they saw him, he was knocking them out and (laughs) stealing a gun and, and, you know, probably a few other supplies to go after his son without any of their help or anything like that. So the fact that they're, you know, Jack does the, as you, as you commented on earlier, he does the whole like good doctor thing of like, Oh, let's, let's, uh, you know, make sure that he's okay, whatever, as opposed to just immediately like, why the hell did you do that? Right. Yeah. But I think that's the justification for, you know, that he was going after his son, you know, and nobody has really been hurt which is ironic considering what's about to happen. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And this, and this, of course, this yeah. whole description of the others, I'm a huge others. Well, at least the first, the first time I was watching it, that's one of the reasons why season three is probably one of my favorites, despite the fact that it contains my least favorite episode. Season three is probably one of my favorites because that's the season we got to know arguably the most the about the others. Season three and season five, but season three we got to lo- we got to know quite a bit about the others. But obviously, this the first time I was watching it, I was so like I perked up in my seat where I'm just like, oh, others information. Like I just wanted to know right. so badly about the others. To me, they were like one of the biggest mysteries of the show. And he's describing all of this stuff, which, of course, in an episode or two, we get to see. And then, of course, we knowing what we know, we know that that's it's all a lie. Um, But I remember like every time I was just like, oh, others information. And then it's they're just so good at that manipulation that they knew that he would go even even not the fact even the fact that he doesn't know that they're lying. They, they just knew that he was going to go and say, Hey, basically we can, we can overtake their camp. Right. 
Now, looking at this scene, do you think that both Locke and Anna Lucia believe what he's saying? Because, you know, there have always been a little bit, you know, especially Anna Lucia after what happened, you know, a few episodes ago when they first, you know, run into Henry, a.k.a. Benry. Um, so do you think that she believes what he's saying? What Michael is saying about the others? I don't, I don't know. Because one of them says it, you know, the fact that, uh, I believe it's, I don't remember if it's in this episode or in one of the, one of the next few episodes, the fact that like, you know, he's been out, he had been, oh, uh, Saeed says it in an episode or two from now where he says, you know, like he's been, he'd been out there for so long, it's possible that he was compromised. I don't know if necessarily they were, Mm -hmm. uh, hip on that i think they were just hip oh god how old am i when i say hip on that um but i think they were just more concerned with what they're hearing versus the the stuff like like Locke just said you know their friend with the beard and uh what they know about benry the fact that he just attacked Ana lucia and whatever i think all of that is weighing on their minds more Right. Now, the funny thing is, Jack just said these people are or those people are liars or or whatever. And yet uh, he doesn't think that maybe whatever Michael saw that they're lot that, you know, basically that they're lying, which they are. He never I guess that thought never crosses his mind or Locke's mind or any of them. That's not to say anything about about Jack. But, you know, that that thought never crossed. I don't think it crossed anybody's mind, really. And Anna Lucia saying, give Sawyer my best. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I think this is interesting that Hurley is now, you know, wearing red. Um, because this is, you know, that's been one of the, you know, dead giveaways from the show. Always. But Get it. I got enough, it. Good pun. Dead giveaways. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, but interestingly enough, you know, I believe that he's only the, he's the only character who has always worn uh, red and never, you know, yeah, um, ended up in that situation uh, where he's dead. So, you know, but now that I'm I'm analyzing the the whole the whole episode and the whole you know, I'm sorry, I just I love that red. part where she, she's there's gin. Like <laughs> we've been to this section of the beach before. There's gin. <laughs> Well, you gotta love Hurley for it. He didn't even bring the blankets. No blankets, and that would be the that would be her downfall. Right. What did I mean, what exactly some... did he bring? Exactly, <laughs> that's what I was gonna say. I mean, besides all the food in the pantry, he didn't even bring but wine. Nothing... Yeah, nothing to wash that down. Groovies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I I don't feel as old now saying hip on that if he's gonna say groovy. <laughs> and then this this gif, awesome, yeah. the the gif of of him giving the of of Jin giving the thumbs up that gets passed around our friend group quite a bit now. Did you notice what book Sawyer is reading? Right, a twin. Yes. Have you have you ever read it? Because they ha- no, they did publish it, like the real version of it or whatever. Yeah. Or at least a manuscript. Yeah. I've never I've never never had the I've never bought it, so I've never had the chance to. I wouldn't mind it though. If anybody wants to send us copies of Bad Twin, uh, tweet us at Clock Shelves, and we'll give you our ad. We'll give you our addresses, or we'll get a PO box so you don't know our actual addresses. But uh, yeah, get in touch with us, anybody, if you want to send us copies of Bad Twin. <laughs> yeah, we'll only take signed copies though. <laughs> <laughs> Notice where he's pointing the gun, by the way. Right. To his shoulder. Yep. Yep. Well, because he's had so many, so many bad, like, because, you know, he got stabbed in that, I believe it's that arm and everything. You know? Right. And that was yeah. the shoulder that he got shot in. And yeah. And then, I mean, how cut up do you need to be in order to get dressed and not notice that you're missing a gun? 
Well, I mean, I don't, I don't know, but I would assume after. Uh, no, I can't say that. Never mind. I was gonna say I mean, something. It's like checking. <laughs> you know, it's like checking yourself after you know when you're on your way out. You know, keys, wallet, cell phone. Yeah. Keys, wallet, cell phone. Yeah. You know, so it's like you know, if you're on an island, you know, especially you know the lost island, you know, you would think that gun would be one of the things I would check for. Especially him, because he's in control of all mm-hmm. the guns or most of the exactly. guns. And of course, Locke said, you know, like now he's like, oh, I need to now I need to to give you all the information, Jack. And she wants to. It's it's interesting that she's basically planning on shooting him right now. Right. Because he attacked her like we know she has the gun and whatever. But she wants him to have a sense of freedom when he does it. Yeah, but at the same time, it's like, you know, it. it... You know, if you look back and see, um, you know, the way that she killed uh, Jason a few episodes ago, I mean, she just told him what he had done and then she went again, you know, she went ahead and, and shoot the guy. So, I mean, I guess this is all just for Hollywood purposes, I guess, you know, they need to, she needs to untie the guy and give him this sense of freedom before she kills him, which really doesn't make sense. I don't see. I don't know though. I mean, granted, it is in mostly in like it's TVs and movies, but like, if you ask me. well, yeah, but but that tends that kind of thing happens a lot. Like, you know what I mean? Like, certain people they they don't uh, they say that uh, you know if you because if you if you were to kill someone who's tied up, like that's because then realistically they can't fight back, and it's not a fair fight, quote unquote. But right now he's there. If she has the gun to him, he can charge at her and take it away. So he does technically have the ability to fight back. Do you know what I mean? Right. I think it's also maybe because she knows that she can't go through with it. But she already has the feeling that she's not going to be able to go through with it. You think? I don't know. (laughs) You sounded so confident. (laughs) Oh, look at Lynn. That's her name, right? Yes. Yeah. Lynn. So, um, interesting story. <laughs> we have, I haven't told this on any of the, I don't think I told this on any of the podcasts since being back, but, uh, Jake and myself and Liam went here to the, um, the convention center, the convention center, uh, this, this last time that we went and it was just about five o'clock and they were locking all of the doors. All most of the doors were were locked. And we got right to where the security guard was getting and locking the very last one. And we go, he's like, "What?" And we're like, "You know, can we come in for like not even five minutes and just take a few pictures?" <laughs> and he just goes, "Why?" And we're we're like, "We are huge fans of the TV show Lost, and we came here from various parts of the country, and we just wanted to get some quick shots because they filmed something here." And he goes, "I mean, I guess." I go, "Not even five minutes. Thank you so much." And like, we ran in, we took a few shots from like various places, just you know, so you can see like the escalator and whatever. And then as we're, I look at I look at the other two guys, and I go, "Are we good? Yeah, okay." And then we we went out, and we were like, "Thank you so much." And the guy goes. I didn't even know they filmed Lost here. And we were just like, yeah, they definitely did. And, like, we're huge fans of it. So thank you so much. You made our night. And he was like, sure. And then he just closes the door and locks it. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's hilarious. So, yeah, that was – I don't like I said, I don't think I've told that story on any of the podcasts yet. So there there you go, people. There's a, a exclusive for you. <laughs> How many have you recorded since you came back from the island? Um, only three or four. Not not very many. Gotcha. Oh, and this is so, you know, I guess painful that she takes down the, the, the plane, the flight number and everything. And then, you know. Oh, yeah. This final conversation that, where they, they basically make up just before right. they'll never have the chance to... <laughs> to see or talk to each other again. And here we go. And here here it is. This Now what it now there's been some some rumblings and uh people can you know people who listen will actually be able to hear I believe we talked about it in 
the episode that comes after this that I recorded just the other day. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent done with that edit. So maybe it won't be in there. I'm not sure yet, but there's uh, rumors and innuendo that, um, Michelle Rodriguez, Cynthia Watros and several others got in trouble while they were on uh, drunk driving. Yes. Yeah. And that, uh, that's the rumor as to why, these two characters were written out of the show, but yet other people supposedly who had gotten in trouble, such as Daniel day Kim and a few others right. didn't get fired. What, what do you think? What are your thoughts? I don't know when I'm thinking about, well, maybe not so much Cynthia Watros, um, but um, uh, Michelle Rodriguez, I'm thinking that she just did that season and that was it for her. I don't think that she was, um, I don't think that she, maybe she had any intentions of um, staying on the show. Um, well, see, now that's strange, but, though, because like the way that we a, a few of us have talked about it uh, in private and we've said the way that we always felt much like Mr. Echo, the way we always felt her character was introduced and played up. We thought she was going. We thought that the writer's intention was that she was going to be a bigger part right. of the show. Right. But I don't know. I mean, I I feel like it was definitely. I I want to blame it on coincidence. Maybe um, I don't think that the producers would want just to get rid of her and Cynthia Watchers at the same time just because they got involved in a DUI. Uh, and I know that that was the case. I think they and I don't think they got in the DUI at the same time. I think they just got it like probably like a week apart or something. And I'm not even sure if Daniel Day Kim uh, got it like during this season or not. I'm not, you know, 100% on those facts, but I just don't know. I just think it would be, you know, petty, I guess. It would be very petty. Get, yeah. Just to get rid of them just like that. You know, I don't know. I don't know. It's definitely, you know, I, I, I when it comes to um, Michelle Rodriguez's character, Ana Lucia, I really like her. I don't think she's the best actress out there. Um, but, you know, I care for her character because it brought something different and it was actually quite interesting to see. And now with uh, Libby, I really feel sad. And that's the thing that I don't like. I feel that it was very unfair that she, th- that her character was... Um, killed off the show and we didn't even really get to see you know her entire backstory you know see i don't Um, know i always felt ana lucia was like a and i mean granted they they spent more time on her but i always felt she was more of a fully developed character or on the way to being a fully developed character versus after a certain point it seemed libby was only there to serve hurley right and you see terrible acting i mean She's not dead. I can tell. <laughs> and now this is bad. Michael? And then he just, like... Yeah, uh, her... Ugh. And then how many times did he shoot her, too? He shot her twice. And he shot... Yikes. I believe he... I mean, he really wanted to kill her. Yeah, I believe he shot Ana Lucia once, her twice, and then he right. shoots himself because I remember reading a thing where it was like, four gunshots, the number four. Right. You know. Right. I mean, I just feel bad for Libby. And the, now, the way that Libby dies, that is good acting. See, I... I not in this episode. I'm, not on this Oh, episode. not... Yeah, no, yeah. The net, yeah. Well, I like the fact in, in you know, where she, Michael, Michael, and they're just like, yeah, he's alive. He, it's okay. And she just has this look of horror on her face. Right, right, right. And of course... Benry has no idea because as he says in the season two finale, he mentions that uh, he's not a fan of the deal that was made. So he has no idea what just like right. what that was all about. Right. But he has to go with it. And that uh, that was the end of this episode. Um, I feel like we I feel like we had a good discussion, but I feel like we skipped over what other people are going to say were quote unquote big moments. But realistically, there's not much to say, I don't think, that hasn't already been said amongst at least our friend group or anything else like that, or that you couldn't find online or whatever, you know. 
Right. Well, I mean, if anything, just leave us, you know, a comment and I'll read it sometime <laughs> and answer, you know, any questions that people may have. But, you know, it's just a pretty self-explanatory, you know, uh, episode. And I really just feel like the whole purpose of watching Lost is to enjoy it and, you know, to talk about it, about things that typically we don't get to talk about, um, you know, on a regular basis. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just, you know, to have fun and share the experience of watching the episode again. Well, yeah, because realistically, if we were like, if you and I, we were in the same room right now and we were watching it like right, we already know what's going to happen. Right? right. So we would just we probably would have had like the exact same conversation, except I wouldn't have necessarily been like, what are your thoughts on it? Like as it like, you know, when I'm doing it like this, I'm saying stuff like that to generate content versus, you know, I would just say like, oh, yeah, I think this. And then if you have you know, something to say, you say it. And then if not, then you don't. And then we just move on, you know? And I, and I've actually, uh, while we were in Hawaii, uh, at one point, um, one of the girls, uh, who we became friends with later on when she was, uh, at our place, she put lost on, uh, Netflix on the TV. And we were just there just watching almost the entirety of the first season. And we would just, uh, it was me and her and, and another friend that we made this time. And we would just sit there and just all, watch the show and talk about various stuff kind of like we just did with this episode not necessarily it, what exactly is happening on screen we would talk about things and again it was season one so we would talk about things that would happen in season three and four and six and whatever because right. we all know the show we all love the show so much so yeah i mean and if it makes you feel better and if it makes the listeners feel better you know all eight times that i've seen this episode i've always said that anna lucia's death was not very well acted <laughs> so you know and, you know, same old, same old. <laughs> um, but do we have anything else for this episode? Because, I mean, well, well here's I mean, the thing. Like, okay, so you had said, and we talked about it briefly, the fact that you had said, you know, that her death or the the two deaths were emotional for you. And I know you had said you liked the, the, the character of Ana Lucia. What 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 do you think in terms of the fact that a lot of people said that they didn't necessarily like her? Like, what makes you like her that maybe a lot of people not try to change people's minds right now? Not and not just well, in your typical Esteban way of like, I'm right. Everyone else is wrong. Suck it. Like, <laughs> OK, well, now the you know, the best strategy um <laughs> was ruled out to convince people <laughs> on why they should like Ana Lucia. I'm going to go with my second best strategy. And it's, you know, I can really identify with her character. And again, this is something that I've said every single time that I've recorded a podcast with you is that, you know, every single character on Loss is very relatable. So I just feel like, you know, as human beings, you know, and, and you know, I'm just going to throw an example out there, you know, just pretend that you're back in high school and, you know, and you probably made a friend or you were trying to fit in or something. And then, you know, you screwed somebody up, you know? So eventually, you know, um, I just feel like we all have to go through that walk of redemption. So with her, I mean, she got off, you know, the wrong foot with, you know, the rest of the people on the, on the plane because she shot Shannon. So I feel like eventually, you know, we actually learn to care about Anna Lucia because we knew that she was a flawed character. You know, she had been involved in this shooting and, you know, she had lost a baby and all that. So that made her very, very bitter. So, you know, I can't help but feel, you know, sympathy for her. I I mean I agree. I'm she's not she's not my favorite character. There's there's several things that I don't necessarily like about her, but and I believe I've said it before, some of the things that I don't like about her are some of the same reasons that I don't necessarily like the Jack character who everyone loves. So I I feel that if that's the case that I can understand why I don't like her. But people who like Jack but don't necessarily like her from my point of view, I don't quite understand. But right. like you said, like, I mean, like all of the characters, they're all very flawed and everyone relates to whoever in their own way. I do. I did think it was humorous, though, when you just said, uh, you know, that all of the characters are relatable. But yet you are one of the biggest Charlie haters that I know. I'm sorry. Who? One of the biggest Charlie <laughs> haters. Kidding. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, 
I mean, hate is a strong word, but I mean, I'll allow it. <laughs> I, um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not, I really don't, you know. I'm actually thinking about it. He wasn't even in this episode. Uh, yeah, thank God. I would enjoy, I mean, I enjoy Charlie every now and then. I enjoy some of his lines. I enjoy some of his demeanor. But, you know, the overall character, I just really don't care for. Um you know, he's just too selfish and too... Well, realistically, aren't, I mean, aren't most of these characters extremely selfish? It's just a matter of if you identify with their circumstance of se- or with their version of selfishness. Because yeah, I know I, know, I but... have a Venezuelan friend who's a rather selfish person, too. Oh, don't introduce him to me because, <laughs> you know, I probably, we probably wouldn't click. But, I mean, the thing with Charlie... The thing with Charlie is that he's very, you know, he was just a prick. You know, he was just not a pleasant person to be around. And I know that, you know, most people would argue and, and, you know, that Sawyer was not a very likable person, but, you know, I guess, you know, I guess since we're not there or whatever, we can't hate on Sawyer that much, but I really think that Charlie was very selfish and just not very nice overall. You know, he never really did. He never really did anything to, you know, win people over i feel and when i mean people i just mean the viewers not anybody else on the island i really don't you know i mean just don't care you're, for him that you're much. not necessarily i don't necessarily disagree i i would argue though that like it's i don't know because winning people because that's that's different that's why everybody can have their their favorite character and their least favorite character so, so maybe something that he did or because uh i did talk with someone who commented that his uh drug recovery and and kind of the the backslide that he has and and the various things like that to another person that was relatable because they haven't experienced that like personally but like they know people who've experienced that so like they related to that okay but hear me out I mean, most people would argue that, okay, you can relate to him because, you know, or actually you can feel some sort of empathy uh, for him because he was going through this whole rehabilitation process. But even after he was done with his 12 steps on the island through log or whatever, he was still a mean person. He was just not a pleasant person to be around. He only cared about himself and then he only cared about Claire and then he only cared about Aaron. Um, which I understand. It's almost like, you know, he became this father figure or, you know, at least he thought that he was this father figure or this husband figure, but he really was just not a nice person. So, you know, uh, and, and again, I, that's something that I noticed not the first time that I was watching the show, because at first I was just like, oh, you know, it's, you know, Charlie, Charlie's not a bad person. Probably Charlie, the lovable every junkie. Episode. <laughs> right. Probably because I was watching the episode, you know, you know one week apart you know i was watching the show one week apart between episodes but once you get to binge watch it it's like you get like this constant you know hate message from charlie and he's like oh i just don't like the guy it's like enough you know it's like maybe too much too soon i guess i mean like i said i i mean i don't necessarily feel that way a hundred percent but i can i can appreciate where you're coming from and you know like I said, it's he's not he's not my least favorite. To me, he's he's kind of right in the middle of like I can take him. And I'm leaving. not the only one who thinks like no, that. No, no, I, no, 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 no. I know you're not. Right. I know I've talked again when we were in Hawaii. We were talking, you know, we were all talking, and especially because we've we've added new people to our friend group and and you know uh, reignited old friendships and all that sort of stuff. So everybody, right. we got to all talking again. Almost as if it was the first time of oh who's your who's your favorite or who's your least favorite or whatever and, right and uh, you know I would mention a few times you know like oh yeah Esteban his least you know one of his least favorite is Charlie because he doesn't think he's a good person and I there were a few people who were like yeah I would agree with that but th- like I said there were also a few people who were like oh no Charlie is lovable and there were some people I'm not going to name names but there were some people who jokingly said that they would love to be on an episode with you and debate you because I used your thing of, uh, if you say you're a Charlie fan, you've only ever watched the series once. And they were just like, um, no, I've watched it multiple times and I still like Charlie. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I mean, you know, I have a motto and it's basically, you know, if I'm the only one who thinks something, I'm probably misunderstood. 
And then if there's another person who thinks just like me, I'm just right. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, whoever says that they have seen the show more than once and they still like Charlie, I mean, they probably fell asleep or, you know, they were heavily medicated while watching it. Because honestly, I mean, it's just if you watch the show, if you binge watch the show and, you know, you get Charlie in two or more episodes in a row, there's no way that you're going to like the guy. There's no way. Again, I don't I don't agree with you 100 percent on that. But to be fair, and a lot of people, everybody who listens to this show knows almost that feeling I have about Jack. I'm not saying that, you know, I hate the guy or, you know, oh, I can't stand him in two episodes or more because he's in almost every episode. But I mean, everybody, like I said, everybody has their, you know, their personal feelings on the various characters. Um but uh, we've talked way too much about Charlie for an episode that he wasn't even in. <laughs> yeah, like he doesn't he's not even worthy of it. <laughs> um yeah, if we don't have anything else uh about yeah. this episode, uh hit them with your social media so that they can come after you about all of these uh feelings that you have. Right. So, if you're actually going to send hate mail my way please don't contact me via instagram or twitter at stban24 um if you're actually going to show support and say that i'm right please do (laughs) uh esteban always lovely talking with you uh thank you for taking the time out of your very busy uh miami lifestyle uh existence (laughs) that you have and discussing our favorite show with me once again My pleasure, my pleasure. Uh, And with that, I will end the episode with the traditional thank you, namaste, and good luck. (laughs) 